if you've been ripped off. I felt very cheated, cheated and conned. But are struggling to get back your hard-earned cash. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. Help is at hand from the sheriffs. Hello. We're High Court Enforcement. We have an outstanding writ of control. They're back with a brand new team. Determined to get you the money you're owed. You're wasting our time. I'm now going to call a locksmith. Acting with the High Court's authority. He's the one with a court writ. So he's the victim, not you. They have the power to remove assets. We're here to retrieve full balance, if not remove goods otherwise. To ensure you're not shortchanged. The sheriffs being our last saviour and hope. Every year, sheriffs in England and Wales recover your unpaid debts totalling £100 million. I've got my money back, and now we can put this matter to bed. Coming up. After saving up for her first car, Holly Woodall's dreams were shattered when she was sold one too defective to drive. It had taken me two or three years to earn all this money. Everything that I'd worked for was gone, basically. At the dealership responsible... Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Ben and Miles face a hostile reception. Are you touching me again? I'll kill you, When a mobile bar company is served a high court writ... Let me go have a chat with the neighbours, see if they know anything. It's the sheriffs that call last orders. We'll gain entry to the premises ourselves, take control of goods and remove them. And when a used car dealer refuses to refund a customer... We've arranged that we're going to pick up her car. She's received your proposal, but she hasn't agreed to anything. It's a bumpy ride for the sheriffs. Locked. In Yorkshire, High Court enforcement agents Ben Dyram and Miles Whitworth are on the road. With a combined experience of 15 years, they have encountered many difficult debtors in their time. And they suspect today could be one of those days. So we're off to Halifax uh, now with a High Court writ um, to Motor Arena. It's a large garage, 600 cars on site. It mainly deals with prestige motors. We're after just over eight and a half thousand pounds. The money is owed to Richard Woodall and his daughter Holly. They came across Motor Arena when they were looking to buy her her very first car. The area that we live in is quite a rural area. There's not really many bush routes, and so learning to drive was a way of being able to go and see my friends and just having a life of my own rather than relying on my parents. <laughs> She worked up at the local garden centre from uh, 15 uh, every Saturday and Sunday and basically t t saved up herself and always had this dream to, to buy her own car and wanted to you know, have it for her birthday to be able to use. So we're obviously very proud of her and supportive you know, to let her uh, you know, go for her goals. Polly managed to save £5,000 and with her heart set on a Fiat 500, she found one advertised by Motor Arena that looked perfect. It was a white convertible Fiat 500 with a red roof. It only had one owner. And the write-up was just, like, amazing. It was just everything that I'd ever wanted in a car. Having agreed a price of £4,700, they placed a deposit and travelled the 50 miles to Halifax to check it out. We had a look around the car. There was a small scratch on the door sill. So we got them uh, to have a, have a look at that, and they said that they'd actually take it away just then and get it to touched up. It all felt very rushed and we were sort of basically dragged through to sort of go and settle up and, and pay before, you know, we you know, could be totally confident with everything that was uh, going on. Nevertheless, they handed over the money and set off in Holly's new car. It was great. I was just like, I bought my first car and it was a sense of achievement that I'd been able to pay and afford my own car. I was pressing all the buttons on the way back, annoying Dad, <laughs> and pressing, trying to connect my phone up and trying to find out what every button did and things like that. Yeah, it was just really nice. But not long into their journey came the first signs of trouble. Pretty much uh, as soon as we got onto the, uh, the motorway, uh, it all started going sluggish. When you're trying to 
accelerating things, the, 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 the losing power, uh, and just just would not wouldn't pull well. I think the main thing when we all sort of realised was when the engine warning light came on, and then that was the first instinct that maybe something isn't right with the car. Richard called Motor Arena and agreed to take the car to a local garage to get it checked out. We took it to the mechanic on the Tuesday. Uh, and obviously when he rang us back to, after he'd had a chance to inspect it, found that it had got uh, head gasket failure. Also all the brakes were binding and the servo had gone on it. And a couple of other things that he'd found that uh, weren't uh, up to standard. He was really surprised that, they, that they'd even allowed it to be able to be on the, on the road and said it wasn't roadworthy uh, and even able to, for us to, to drive it back. According to the mechanic, the repairs were likely to cost thousands of pounds including replacing the engine. But Motor Arena wouldn't accept his report. And they actually became quite rude and abusive. Nor would they pay for the repairs or offer a refund. We would try to keep getting in touch with them. And they were blocking calls. The only times occasionally that you'd get through was if you used somebody else's mobile to try and get through. And then they'd t say that certain people weren't in and that they'd ring you back. But obviously no nobody would ever get back in touch. It was a tremendous amount of stress for really all the family and especially for Holly. It had taken me two or three years to earn all this money and because I hadn't got anything to show for it anymore, everything that I'd worked for was gone basically. Left with no other choice, Holly's parents filed a money claim online. When Motor Arena didn't show up for the court hearing, the judge ruled in favour of the Woodalls and they were awarded a refund plus costs. But getting their payment wouldn't be as simple as they'd hoped. The court awarded them 14 days to pay the full amount, uh, and after 14 days we still hadn't heard anything. So I rang back to the court, uh, and basically they said the next option was for us to take them to the, to the High Court. The sheriffs are our last hope, um, and we are hopeful that we'll get our money back. It's now down to Ben and Miles to get Motor Arena to finally pay up. But prior experience with the company on a different writ suggests that won't be easy. It's a place where we've visited before, and the last time we were there we had a very hostile reception, on the verge of being physical at some stages. Stand back on me space. You are really breaching a piece in this job, and we're going to have to call the police at this rate. It's getting out of hand. You need to calm down. Stand back on me space. It was a bit hostile inside there, but things have calmed down now. The light can just missed us there. To add insult to near injury, the sheriffs had to walk away empty-handed when the company's solicitor managed to get a last-minute reprieve from the courts. Sometimes you attend uh, businesses or addresses and uh, people take an instant dislike to you for no apparent reason. I'm a very easy-going sort of person. The bulldog? Yeah, what was that, the bulldog yeah. last time I was here? Soft bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> Today, the sheriffs are hoping for better luck. That'd be a challenge, won't it? Yeah. Put a packet here, walk around. Motor Arena claims to be the biggest car supermarket in West Yorkshire, with over a 1,000 used vehicles for sale. And this morning, the forecourt is jam-packed with potential assets. But will the company be willing to pay their debt? Not fancying the queue at reception, the sheriffs look around for somebody else they can deal with. There's old chap. Hey up. Hey. Hello, mate. It's a manager they met last time. He asks our camera operator to step outside and ushers the sheriffs into an office where they're joined by another senior member of staff. Miles tells them he's here with a new writ. This one's a uh, Richard Woodall and has come to collect over eight and a half thousand pounds. The men claim they don't have the money and want to set up a payment plan. No, no. What's your name, sorry? 
All right, Muzza. I don't know. I don't know your relationship. I don't know if you're brothers, are you? Are you brothers? Right. Now, due to what happened last time, we're going to resolve this today, Lamar, because yes. we, we will we will remove goods today, like the computers, chairs, tables, and everything. Yeah. We're going to give you half now, and then it goes up to nine thousand one hundred. Then when we start moving stuff, it goes to ten and a half grand. It, it, it's in yeah. everybody's interest to pay. To be fair, you're going to have to find it. I'm going to give you half now. In the meantime, the sheriff starts scoping out the premises. Just having a look, mate. I'm just having a walk about, mate. I'm quite entitled to do that. Provoking an angry response. Talk me out. I don't like threats. You said you were going to get everybody down here and sort me out. I'm not here to argue with you. Just here to collect eight and a half thousand quid or it goes up. It seems Motor Arena aren't planning to settle their debt without a fight. Will the sheriffs be able to get Holly her money back? We don't believe a business of your size that's got two sites has only has £200 in the bank. Few of us can afford to be left out of pocket. If you've been let down by faulty goods or substandard services and are struggling to get your money back, you can use the county courts to recover your hard-earned cash. Around two million claims are made every year in England and Wales and can be filed by post or online for a small fee. Both parties in the case will be asked to submit evidence and you may have to attend a court hearing. If you win your case, a county court judgment or CCJ will be issued against the debtor. If they still don't pay, it's time to call the sheriffs. This morning, enforcement agents Luke Peacock and Carl Hardingham are in the southeast looking for a hospitality business. Today we're off to um, West Hyde down in Kent, um, executing a high court writ against UK Mobile Bars Limited. I'm looking at collecting a balance of £1,217. The claimant is a local wedding magazine publisher that went to court after printing an advert for UK Mobile Bars Limited, which they say the company never paid for. The sheriffs are hopeful of settling the bill today. Going by the name and the research we've done, they supply bars for events such as weddings and things. Companies fully active as to what we can gather from our research, so um, yeah, see what happens. Right, so just pull it in now, mate. This is unit number one. So what unit number are we looking for, Luke? Please, 14 mate? slash 15. So if you go straight down. These here? Ah, oh, there it is, in the corner, look. Okay, perfect. UK mobile bar. Yeah, Chase would put me in the bush car. The mobile bar business is largely a summer trade, and arriving out of season on a weekday morning, there's little sign of life at the unit. All locked up, mate. Right. Been here for some time, haven't they? Yeah. If they have reasonable grounds to believe there are sellable assets inside, High Court enforcement agents are entitled to force entry. Mm. No. Let me see if there's any response. But they will always attempt to reach the debtor first. Thank you for calling UK Mobile Bars. Please hold while we connect you to customer services. <laughs> This morning, no one from the company's picking up. Let me go have a chat with the neighbours, see if they know yeah. anything. Morning, morning. Uh, High Court Enforcement Agent. I hope I can make some inquiries about next door. The bar people, yeah. They're here most of the time, are they? Don't suppose you have any kind of contact number with them at all. The neighbours don't have a direct number for the debtor, but they are able to contact the landlord. Lovely. OK, perfect. Thank you very much for your help. Cheers. Cheers and soon, the sheriffs have the number they need. Hi, my name's Luke Peacock. I'm a High Court Enforcement Agent. Uh, we're currently down at your unit. I'm here to execute a writ on behalf of KD Media Publishing Limited. 
The company director says he doesn't know anything about the writ. Sorry, did you say you've had no correspondence? Right. But it soon becomes clear there's more to the story. So what you're saying is you knew the judgment had been issued because you then made an application to have it set aside? Well, it, it hadn't been set aside and the claimant uplifted it to the High Court. At this present time, we have the writ from the High Court to enforce and collect the balance outstanding of £1,217.51. The debtor claims he applied to the courts to get the judgment set aside, but he never heard back. Eight months of interest and fees have increased the debt, and he's not happy. I can't tell you what you should have been told and shouldn't have been told, because I'm not in a legal position to do so. What I would suggest on that front is you need to seek legal advice from your solicitors. So are you willing to make the payment? The man says he doesn't want to pay. OK, the, the process for us right now, uh, we're going to transfer the case to stage two of enforcement, which will incur additional costs. Um, and we'll gain entry to the premises ourselves. What I can tell you is the money gets held in a, in a client account for 14 days before we remit the money to the client. Despite the reassurances, the debtor is still refusing to settle the debt. So the sheriff's up the ante. OK. So the balance will increase to £1,811.51. Yep. And it works. Bank details, yeah? Faced with an ever-growing bill, the company director throws in the towel. £1,217.51. pence. If you can just take a screenshot of it in case we require it, I'll leave a receipt through the post and a copy of the writ as well. OK, thanks very much. A bit disgruntled, really. I think the last he was claiming to have heard was back in February when judgment was entered. But ultimately, he didn't want us taking any further action or incur any additional costs. So um, he came to the realisation that he had to make payment. Otherwise, we were going to look again inside and removing goods. Great result all round, really, for the uh, claimant. Over a year after they submitted their invoice, the small publishing company will finally get the money they're owed. UK Mobile Bars Limited told us that their failure to pay the debt was due to the documents being incorrectly posted to an old address. They also say they had notified the claimant of this change of address and that the matter has now been resolved and everyone has moved on. In Halifax, Ben and Miles are at Motor Arena. We're going to give you half now and then it goes up to 9,100. Then when we start moving stuff, it goes to 10 and a half grand. They're attempting to recover a debt owed to Hollywood All, who was sold a faulty car. You said you were going to get everybody down here and saw me out. The company is so far unwilling to cooperate. As we expected, they weren't too keen to see us. As soon as we started looking around, I mean, I went into the key room um, just to get a couple of keys with registration numbers on so we could run them through to see if they're on finance and stuff. The two brothers um, followed me in and were very hostile, making threats that they were going to get other people down here to sort me out. Other members of staff are also becoming aggressive. You only come in. Extra fees mean the debtor's bill has risen to over £9,000. But not only are they refusing to pay, they now claim the assets here belong to somebody else, a company called Autopoint Limited. Who is Autopoint? All the pamphlets are on Motor Arena. Website's Motor Arena. Receipts. Receipts are in Motor Arena, isn't there? In fact, it's on your VAT returns as well. Satisfied that they have enough evidence, the sheriffs aren't backing down. All your receipts are Motor Arena. Are you telling me Motor Arena is a non-existent non entity? But they have a problem. Paperwork in the office has also confirmed that all the cars here are on what's called lease partnership, meaning that until they're sold, they're still owned by a car auction company. Not only does Motor Arena seem to not have any real assets, the brothers in charge claim it has barely any money either. £200 in the bank? No, I don't think so. 
Over a thousand cars on site, you advertise. The biggest choice in West Yorkshire. Yeah, probably one of the smallest bank balances, is that right? We don't believe a business of your size that's got two sites has only has 200 pounds in the bank. Certainly not if the receipts Ben's found in the office are anything to go by. Right, so these are cars that's been sold over the last few days. So there's one here, £5,250. Where's that gone then? Well, I've got paperwork here with a £1,000 deposit, £2,000 deposits. Where's all that money gone? The brothers won't say, and the sheriffs have no way of finding out. But just when the chances of walking away with any money at all are looking slim, Miles makes a breakthrough. Who's the motorbike belong to? Well, I'll take that motorbike. He's discovered a motorbike in a back room. I will do. No, you won't. I will. Just exact same as last time. Um, saying they've got nothing in the bank, they want us to go away and we'll pay it next week, but they've done that before. We won't see any more money. Anyway, got a motorcycle inside, I'm gonna go clamp it. See what happens. We need to get some sorted here. I guarantee you, if he phones that tow truck for that bike, it'll go up to stage three. Finally, with a valuable asset under threat of removal, the brothers want to negotiate. Go on, then. What, what are you going to offer today, mate? You've only got a grand. Nah, no chance. 50%. Four and a half, five grand, then we'll talk. The debtors offer 4,000 and ask for another seven days to pay the remainder. So next Friday, yeah? The bank account details on this piece of paper. And the deal is done. I'll give you that. All right, I'll be on my way. Cheers, lads. Although it's only a half payment for now, the sheriffs are satisfied. It was very hostile in there. It went from very calm to very angry within a few minutes. It wasn't long at all before they were kicking off. Ben started getting all the keys to all the cars, finding all the uh, log books and stuff like that, and uh, they, weren't, they weren't taking too kindly to that. Once uh, Miles had clamped the, the, the motorcycle, they changed just like that. They wanted to, to come to some arrangement. Initially, it wasn't enough, um, but we, we've got in the region of 50%, which has given them seven days to pay the balance. And it would have been nice to get the full amount, but I think we've rattled the cage enough today. Um, I don't think we'll have to come back, to be honest. I have a gut feeling on this one. Um, hopefully we don't have to come back. Ben's instincts were right, and Motor Arena paid the rest the following week. For Richard and Holly Woodall, there's finally an end to an episode which has hung over the family for the past 18 months. It's a massive well done to all the sheriffs, and thank you for getting my money back. It's a massive relief. I would advise anybody who's going through similar problems to obviously go through court proceedings. Then it's not quite as difficult as you first envisage. Uh, it does take time, and you've got to be prepared to put the effort in. At the end of the day, the results, you know, speak for themselves. Later in the program, it all kicks off when the sheriffs visit Motor Arena for another claimant. Back, 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 back. 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 If you've won a county court judgment but are still out of pocket because it hasn't been paid, for £66 you can get the case transferred up to the High Court, which will issue a writ for enforcement by the sheriffs. Can you please come to the door? Here with the High Court writ today. We will be executing today, if not removing goods. These High Court awards have to be paid, and the sheriffs have unique legal powers to ensure you get the money you're owed here regarding a high court writ of control. We can't get off the site today without full payment. If you shut the door us, we'll get a lock stuff here. Why are you preventing us access? And there's no limit on the size of debt they can pursue. £8,691.22p. £40,386. You can just do the bank transfer. If they're successful, they'll recover your money and costs from the debtor. Okay. Brilliant. Cheers, thank, thank you. you. As well as their own fees, which are set by the government. We'd have to take the case to the next stage and we'd have to get removal trucks here to remove your goods. If the sheriffs can't get your money, you'll be asked to pay another £90 to cover their costs.
car dealers make up a fair proportion of the sheriff's work, and some are not as difficult as others. Today, enforcement agents Ben and Miles are heading to Blackburn, hoping to settle another unpaid debt. We're going to a business called Motormania. It's a car dealership, and we're after just over £5,400. The claimant on this case is a private individual, and I would imagine the writ is for a dispute of the sale of a vehicle. Motormania in Blackburn, not to be confused with other similarly named businesses, owes money to a customer who bought a car that later developed a serious fault. Unable to settle the dispute, the customer was left with no option but to take Motormania to court, and she won when the company director failed to enter a defence. Not far away now. I think that's it, mate. They had no sign. I think this is the back door. Oh, is it the front door? It's difficult to say, isn't it? Debtors are forewarned in writing that the sheriffs are coming. On the other side, quickly getting. getting. Once they're spotted, some businesses are quick to shut up shop. And Miles suspects their presence today hasn't gone unnoticed. That might be where he's taking the pictures. Was he taking four? It might be. Oh, down there, yeah. yeah. I, I hear something else. Uh, oh. that chopping that car was having a good look. Reptile mania. Oh. Aquamania. Pet mania. Yeah, it's, it's got to be more mania, 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 mania. There he is. He's waiting for us. Yeah, he's seen us. Tip top. Hey, mate, you right? Yeah. Motormania? Yeah. Hey, How are you? Yeah, we're here today to collect £5,405.17. We have applied for a, a, a J2 uh, 44, something like that. M2 44. Yes, something like that, 255 quid. The N244 the man is referring to is an application to set aside the enforcement. Ben puts in a call to the office to check if it's been successful. We just got the uh, Motormania job down in uh, Blackburn. Defendant claims he's applied for the N244. But we've received nothing to tell us to stop, no. It's an application. Probably a boy, just an application, not yeah. a stay. No, so stay an application that. doesn't stop the enforcement. As Motormania's attempt to set aside the enforcement has failed, the balance needs to be settled today. But the man's now claiming there's another development the sheriffs are not aware of. We've arranged that we're going to pick up her car. Can I see the yeah, yeah, folded email? Yeah. The uh, defendant claimed that he's spoken to the claimant and uh, she's going to return the vehicle. Uh, again, we're going to clarify that through the office and see, uh, see if that's correct. Ben wants to get this matter resolved as quickly and amicably as possible. So he puts in another call to the office. Defendant claims he's spoken to the claimant. Can we speak to her and ask if, uh, if that's correct? And uh, apparently she's going to uh, bring the car back. The office gets the out-of-pocket customer on the line. But will she verify Motormania's story? Yeah. All right, speak to you soon. Cheers, bye. You said you'd come to some arrangement about returning the vehicle? Yeah. You haven't. She hasn't agreed to anything. No, she hasn't. She hasn't. We've just spoken to her. She hasn't agreed to anything, Matt. With the sheriffs regaining the upper hand, Ben turns his attention to potential assets to use as leverage. Blocked. With a customer almost £5,000 out of pocket and any potential assets behind the locked gate, Ben and Miles need to use their powers of negotiation if they're going to get this settled today. How much was the amount? Just over 5,000. 5,405 yeah. and 17p. Yeah, it will be originally. But will the man agree to work with the sheriffs to get the customer's refund sorted once and for all? Come inside. Yeah. Luckily, the man appears happy to try and resolve the debt, but he doesn't want to let in our camera operator. Basically, we stick about here for another hour or so, then it's going to go up. This is how it escalates. We, we will work with you to a certain extent, but if we're here for a while, then it would go up. 
The man is keen to avoid more fees, and after a bit of gentle persuasion from the sheriffs, he agrees to pay the debt in full. But only if he gets the faulty car back today. We, we, we can request the office to give her a call. I'll ring the office and see, see what she says. Is there any chance we can speak to the client and see if she's willing to give this car back? When this went to court, um, the, the defendant didn't attend, so it was found in default. If he'd attended, he could have specified at that time whether the car was returned to him uh, and he would have refunded the money. Although the customer is under no legal obligation to return the car in exchange for her refund, the sheriffs think this would be the most straightforward solution. Settling the debt today all rests on a phone call to the customer. Hi, it's Miles again. He's wanting to come and get the uh, car today, if that's OK. You're in all day. Have you got the key as well, yeah? Yeah. Excellent. It'll be held for a couple of weeks um, due to law, and then within three weeks it should be paid. OK, no worries, mate. So we've spoken to the, the claimant on the phone there, and she's going to return the car, or he, he's going to collect the car today. So he gets his car back, she gets a refund, everybody's happy. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks for dealing with that. Spot on. So the claimant could have said from the start that she doesn't want to give the car back and she just wants the money. She was quite forthcoming with giving the car back. Um, it made our life a lot easier once we uh, figured that out and the payment came straight away. He dealt with it well. Um, he is a little bit out of pocket, obviously, with uh, court costs and stuff like that. But he's getting his car back at the end of the day, um, so he's not completely out of pocket and a good result for everyone. Later that day, the faulty car was returned. And thanks to the sheriffs, the customer finally got the money she was owed. Well done, man. Yeah, everyone's off it. Today, James King and Carl Hardigam are in the southeast. We are down in Ashford, Kent. Uh, to a MTA Network Limited. But after doing a little bit of a background check on the company, it is a car garage. Um, so, yeah, we should have some equipment there to seize, uh, tools, etc. So I can't see it being a difficult one to recover if they do refuse payment. MTA Network Limited was taken to court after they bought a gearbox worth several hundred pounds but never paid the supplier. They look to be um, BMW, they look to be sort of like your German vehicle specialists, but like you're more higher end, so I would suspect they have quite expensive equipment. Well, you would assume so. He's driving a Mercedes. Locked, is it? With the main reception shut, the sheriffs head round the back to see if there's another way in. The lights are on, which would indicate that Someone is here, or possibly someone was here. They've gone out. Although no one's in right now, it looks like the business is up and running, and the unit is likely to contain assets. Look, it says on here, advanced diagnostics for the public and trade, which means there's got to be diagnostic machines in there. Think you maybe get a locksmith out on false, false entry. Seizing goods is always a last resort, so first the sheriffs try calling the mobile phone number that's on MTA's website. Hello? And someone picks up. High Court Enforcement, we're actually outside the premises. This is a High Court Risk of Control. The claimant is Bexhill Gearboxes Limited. And balance that we're here to collect today is £1,234.39. The man knows all about the debt, but says it's in the wrong name. 
our high court writ is the name of MTA Network Limited. The sign on the wall is MTA Network. According to the man, MTA is a new business and the judgment should be against his old company, Master Tech Automotive Limited. There is a live writ and it's in your limited company name. So, I mean, would you like, would you like to make the payment? Despite receiving several letters from the court and a letter from the sheriffs over a week in advance of today's visit, the man is refusing to pay. Right, OK. What he's saying, there's another company, however, the business is now traded as MTA. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to give the claimant a call, try and get some background on this story. Good morning. As James speaks to the claimant, the story soon becomes clear. That's it, so it was Master Tech Automotive. The gearbox was bought by Master Tech Automotive Limited, the company which the claimant originally took to court. Did you then go back to court and get the name on the judgment changed, did you? But the name on the judgment was altered to MTA Network Limited after the claimant was informed the company was now trading under this new name. Thank you, bye. So, by the look of it, this guy, this guy is playing a little bit of, little bit of a game. Now, as far as we're concerned, it's enough evidence for us to assume the goods inside belong to them. And if that means getting a locksmith out to gain entry, then that means getting a locksmith out. James King, I can help. But the debtor is soon back on the phone. Yeah, hi there, sir. He now says he plans to appeal the judgment. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, at the end of the day, the court system's a court system. You can take it out with the courts afterwards. Well, I mean, as it stands, we're obviously here to take control of goods and remove them goods today. Being a commercial premises, we can force entry to the premises by using a locksmith. The man now wants to know the balance. Balance outstanding is £1,828.39. No, it's £1,800. £28.39. His initial refusal to pay has cost him an extra £600 in fees. Do you want me to text you the details of the balance? What? Lovely. Thank you. Bye. Saying that he thinks it'll be easier just to make the payment and then he'll take it up with the courts afterwards. So hopefully we should walk away with a payment in full on this one. Thanks to the sheriffs, the company that supplied MTA Network Limited a gearbox have finally got the money they're owed. So, overall, a fantastic result. He was trying to make out that the goods in the property belonged to a different company. As soon as he realised that he wasn't going to leave the site, um, the payment was made over the phone by bank transfer. Back in Yorkshire, Ben and Miles are en route to a job with a strong sense of deja vu. So we're off to Halifax. We're returning to well-known people to us now, Motor Arena. Although on their previous visit, they managed to secure payment for one of the writs against the company, another remains outstanding. We've uh, visited on this case before. It was uh, a bit of a hostile reception on the day. Um, there was missiles thrown at us. Uh, a beer can, in fact, missed me by inches. Um, so we never really know what reception we're going to get here, to be honest. Like the other, this writ is also in favour of a disgruntled customer and totals just under £12,000. The sheriff's previous attempt to enforce was unsuccessful due to a last-minute intervention by Motor Arena's solicitor. They went to court, applied for a stay of writ that uh, buys them more time to put more evidence before the judge. Um, it has gone back to the judge and again he's uh, found against Motor Arena on behalf of the claimant. So we, we are returning today to collect. It's a bit fun one again, isn't it? Yeah, they're not too keen of us really, are they, to be no, honest? But hopefully, being in and out of court that much with it, they should just pay today. Depends who's here. The, the one brother in particular last time wasn't too pleased to see us. Okay, I wonder if they do his mate rates on any of these vehicles now.
Previously, Motor Arena have been reluctant to part with any money without a showdown. So what will today have in store? Rather nice, isn't it? Yeah. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm back. Yes, oh. we're going to go Yeah. Our camera operator is again asked to leave. But this time, when Miles shows the manager his writ, there's a surprise. You paid? That's it. The man says they've already paid and shows a bank statement to prove it. When did you pay it on uh, the 14-day period, yeah? The money was paid directly to the claimant, who hadn't informed the sheriffs. He's just not let us know, sorry, guys. With the balance settled, that should be the end of the matter. But one of the brothers has other ideas. Angered by the presence of our camera operator, his behaviour becomes threatening. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, calm down. You calm down. Calm down. While Ben attempts to pacify him, a passing car pulls up outside. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, bro. It's just the driver of the BMW appears to be either a friend or colleague, and he too objects to our camera operator filming. While the sheriffs are ushered off the premises, the man in the car parks up and returns on foot. We're going with that camera. Get it out of my face before I knock it out. Get it off my face. Move up. Back. Don't touch Back. me. Don't Back. touch Back. me. Don't touch me. Back. Back. Don't touch me. Back. Try touching me again. You touch the camera, man. Touch the camera. You touch me again. I'll kill you. Oh, you won't. Oh, you won't. Oh, it's been so, so. I will go where you go. No, this is that. I right, we're on the public. I've got this. Doesn't know where he lives with this. Aren't they pleasant? Professional outfit. Yeah, I beg to differ. The sheriffs are only too happy to depart. But further down the road, the man in the BMW makes another appearance, hurling abuse out of his car window. You want me to phone the police? You can call your mum, call the police! You understand? Call your Kiss my black Rather not. No, yeah. What is all that about? Unbelievable. Upon the first visit, they were very aggressive too, um, but today was up another level. There's no need to be like that. You know, the advertiser's a professional outfit and they carry on like that. I can't understand it, but I think we dealt with it in the only way we could. Happy with the result, happy we got away unscathed. All's good in the end.